Okay, now we're live. Hi from Las Vegas. This is weekend tea practice for tea curious. And I'm nervous, which is probably a good thing. Um, I read somewhere in a book that if you're nervous, it's probably a good sign that you're doing something that you should be doing. Which I'm not sure if that could be applied to all situations, maybe some situations, but we're not bungee jumping today. We're not doing any of that today. Today we are going to um, wrap up the green, the green tea drink down challenge by doing something with our aged green teas that we've never done before and that I don't think anyone, you know, at least in the United States has done before. We're going to press the green teas into cakes. <laughs> I can't believe we're going to do it. Okay, so I've got, you know, just a ragtag bunch of stuff. We got a bamboo basket. We've got a mold. We got some strainers. Gosh, I'd be like messing up. Um, and then I'm gonna steam the tea in my kettle, and then we're gonna press it. So this is the culmination of me having way too much green tea. If you've been following us over the last couple weeks, you may have found out that I have a hundred green teas in my stash, um, together with everyone on Instagram and on Discord. We've been drinking down tons and tons and tons of green teas, and you know the idea is to try to get stuff out of the way that we were not able to drink down because, you know, life happened. Or at least to just be more aware of what's in our tea collection. And yeah, just realistically speaking, even after two weeks of green tea challenge, I haven't yet, even remotely, finished my green teas. So let's age them after pressing them into cakes. <laughs> I've never done this before, so bear with us. It's going to be a process and we'll just trial and error it, you know? Um, so hello from Las Vegas Planet Pause, Sebras Musen, Sebras Musen, um, Philip from World Tea House, how's it going? Hello. Lion, <laughs> Dr. Felix, and Camellia Blends, how's it going? Oh, I'm nervous. Is it gonna work? Is it not gonna work? So here's just how, how, here's how it's going to go. We need to first figure out what teas we're pressing together and when we do that we need to taste the teas to see how they are before they're pressed so when people press puer cakes you know either you press them from like one batch of tea or you press them from a couple different batches of tea and i don't have a big enough batch of any one green tea to press into a single cake i think so to be safe i'm going to be blending teas from the same producer but from different batches, which is something that's done in Pu'er. Uh, so sometimes Pu'er cakes will be pressed from different mountains or different producers. I'm not a Pu'er expert, nor am I a blending expert, so I'm gonna keep it simple today and kind of blend teas from the same producer, which is uh, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Lee from Verdant Tea. Um, poor Mrs. Lee, in 2017, I bought like a bunch of her Dragonwell to get to know Dragonwell. And then I, you know, did a couple experiments with them, studied them, and then I just kind of let them sit. So now I have five of these Mrs. Lee Dragon Wells that I haven't drunk, and they're from 2017. And I don't foresee myself drinking them a lot, because as we found out during the hot brew experiment earlier this week, they don't taste very good hot brewed. They taste okay cold brewed, but I really want to get them out of the way, so we'll try to press them into a cake. I guess. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's taste the teas together. Um, we will be pressing these leaves together. And I'm curious to see how they'll turn out. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, brew them up. Loose first. This is so that you have an idea of what the cake will taste like after it's pressed together. There's no way for you to be able to accurately predict how a cake will change over time, whether it be pu'er or white tea um, or green tea in this case, but at least we'll get to know the starting material first. So in the future, when we do try these cakes, if they, if they pan out, we'll have a memory of what the tea was like at the very beginning, if that makes sense. And again, note that this is all just, you know, we're just playing around <laughs> and hoping to learn something in the process of doing it. Um, yeah, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and look at the leaf material we're working with here. Oh yeah, let me let me lay out this leaf material on a plate because it's gonna be a little bit different looking. Some of this stuff is first picking dragon well, some of it is later harvest dragon well. And the shape of the leaves is probably gonna play a role in how the leaves press into a cake. Well, you know, ideally, I hope that a lot of these leaves are about the same shape, about the same size, because the more even they are, the better it will be for us to press. Um, having friends pop in. Hello from Las Vegas to um, Nick. How's it going? What time is it there in Australia? Um, to Gako82, Rita Lago, Think Tea NYC. Avi, nice to see you. How's it going? Ross, how's it going? Is it morning? No, it's not morning there anymore. It's evening. I was about to say, Zhaoshanghao, but it's really. Is it Wuan? Wuan or Wuan'an? Gosh, I need to brush up on my Mandarin. I'm so nervous! Why am I so nervous? I'm like really nervous. <laughs> Okay, the world's not gonna end, but I'm just hoping that we can get some kind of result out of this. Um, and yeah, look at how many, you know, look at how many green teas I have going on. There's just so much of the same tea. So again, what we're doing is we're gonna taste a blend of Verded Tea's Dragon Wells from 2017. They're all from the same producer, Mrs. Lee. Um, so you know, while the leaf material isn't so, so different from each other, there is some variation. And it's similar to what you'd see in certain, like, pu'er blends. Um, with pu'er, you're wanting to... I mean, the reason why people blend leaf material from different places is to get a certain flavor. But we don't have that ability here, because we only have a limited amount of tea. And I'm not so much trying to create a cake flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen's testing out the hydraulic press for later. It's making funny noises. I'm not sure if it's the, the boy or if it's a press or if it's the dog. Um, but yeah, we're not trying to... There's no flavor we can match here. There's no flavor we can chase here. We're more just like, I'm just testing to see if the flavor at all will be correct if we combine these teas. All right, so here are the teas. So there's five different dragon wells we'll be blending. This is the first pick, um, first pick Shifeng Dragon Well from um, Mrs. Lee. This is a 43 cultivar. Um, it's a prettier cultivar. Um, it's this one over here. And then this one is the first picking um, 2017. This is the 2017 just regular picking. This is the semi wild. And then this is the. What's the last one that I put on? Number 43 as well, but later picking. So same year, same season, same producer. The only difference is the time of the harvest and also the um, the cultivar being used. So a mix of Longjing 43 and Longjing native cultivar. Uh, I mean, side by side, you'll be able to take the, taste the difference, but I think we'll have a pretty good blend to work with here. So I'm gonna just try to see how they taste like in a guy wand together, just to make sure they don't like <laughs> taste like a Frankenstein creation. I think we'll have no problem, but I just want to see. And this is what, um, from what I understand, poor producers will do in order to test to see what blend they'd like to use for their cakes. The same thing is done for people who like to blend um, black teas for tea bags or green teas for tea bags as well. Um, you usually want to test it out first, and you can dial in your ratios. But today, I'm not going to play with ratios. I'm just going to dump all the teas that I have, mix them together, and press them, because I just want to get rid of all this this tea. You know, it's a lot, and it's not to say that I didn't like the tea. I just I just forgot about it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Alex, nice to see you. I'm nervous about this going on. I don't know why I'm nervous about it. It's not like I'm gonna burn the house down. Um, we did test to see if this would remotely work earlier this week with a tiny batch of tea, but things are a lot different when you do them in bigger scales. So, 
you know, even on the farm, if you make a small batch of tea, it's a lot easier than doing like a larger batch of tea. The larger the batch of tea, the more difficult it is to get a good flavor profile, um, keep up quality, you know, prevent the sky from falling down. So now that we're going to try to press a whole cake out of these leaves, I'm getting kind of nervous. Uh, what are we doing? Why do we do this? It's okay. Um, I honestly learned a lot just from the test we did earlier this week, so I'm really excited to see what pans out during our test today, and, you know, I'll share with you what we've learned from this process. I have never been to Yunnan province, nor have I seen Pu'er being pressed. Um, all of the tea making I've done is mostly in black tea and oolong tea, so this is my first time pressing a cake of any sort. <laughs> You know, I went and watched a couple of videos from like Crimson Lotus and Farm Relief and stuff, just seeing how they even go about it. And we're just gonna MacGyver it, you know? Okay. That tastes fine. That tastes just fine. So I'm, I'm not worried about the mix then. Because again, these are not all the same dragon wells. These are a mix of different dragon wells that I want to just combine so I can get it out of the way and make some cakes so that, you know, I'm gonna keep these teas anyway. I don't see myself drinking them down in the near future. They might as well be in a cake to age. <laughs> so yeah, that tastes fine. All right, this tastes good to me. How does this taste? Um, for a three-year-old tea, it's got a lot of sweetness. It's got a lot of smoothness. Um, again, it's from 2017, and that's why I'm trying to press this stuff into a cake. If I'm going to age it over time, and that's something I've been interested in lately, is can green tea age okay? And if you've been around for some of our other lives, we've done things like 2004 Gyokuro. We've tasted teas from 2016, which still taste pretty amazing, you know? So I've changed a lot of my views about what green tea can be. I certainly can't say that, you know, you need to age your green tea. Um, but I think there's some potential there that we can at least experiment with and see what happens, you know? And when it comes down to it, when you make shang pu'er, you know, raw pu'er, the process to get to shang pu'er is very similar to green tea up until you press the cakes. Um, the differences are the kind of material they're using. You know, in Yunnan, they got those tall trees. So, of course, the leaves that you're using for shang pu'er are going to be a little bit different than you know, the plantation style, kind of like they're like in rows, uh, the bushes that are used for green tea. So there's a difference in flavor and leaf material, but really up until you press them, and besides the leaf material, shang pu'er and green tea are processed, you know, pretty similarly. And then they take the leaves, they steam them, they press them, and then they dry them outside in the sun, which is what we'll do after this once we, once we get this going. <sighs> And yeah, that tastes good to me, so I'm gonna go home ahead <laughs> and blend the teas now. All right, let's dump the leaves over here, get them going. And yeah, I'm just gonna get the nice and kind of like, I'm just gonna dump a bunch of this tea. This is like a good like hundred dollars in Dragon Well. Don't tell Verdant tea. I know they've been like liking some of my photos lately, and I'm like, ooh, they don't know what I'm gonna do with the tea in just a couple days. Uh, all right. Ooh, that's a lot. So it looks like a lot of tea, but really, really good tea um, tends to be pretty, uh, or really, really good dragon ball tends to be pretty light, pretty voluminous. So that's why it looks like a lot. It really does look like a lot. It feels kind of freeing. I don't know. Like, this tea has just been waiting in this bag for this whole time. Ooh, you can see the difference in the Longjing 43 cultivar. So this is, um... The Longjing 43 is a much more pretty kind of, like, buds... Bud sets. More light-colored. Like, nice, fat buds. Usually when you have, like... Extremely beautiful dragon well, it's probably going to be Longjing 43 cultivar. Uh, this type of tea plant was developed to be a little bit earlier harvested and to look a little bit prettier, I think. But arguably, you know, it's it's got like a 
I think the, the original cultivar of Dragonwell has a little bit more interesting taste. Um, and then this is the original cultivar, a little bit more janky looking. See how light colored and kind of even this looks? This is a little bit more like variate, uh, you know, there's more variation. The leaves are longer, the buds aren't as fat. But they're about the same shape and about the same size. So I think these things will probably press okay uh, together. Uh, one of the dangers of like, you know, I probably couldn't press, for example, Sencha with Dragonwell that easily because the way that things interact with each other, you know, the Sencha pieces would fall through and then the Dragonwell pieces would stick together. So we're not going to get as much of an even kind of like blend there. Again, don't tell Verna team. Don't tell them. They're going to send the tea police. Ah! I'm never afraid of the tea police, but I'm kind of afraid of them today. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. And I think this is about 100 grams of dragon oil right here. And we're going to press smaller cakes than what you're used to for pu'er, just because I don't have a big enough mold or press for it, nor do I have 300 grams of tea to work with. All right. I'm just going to blend this like a master tea maker. I'm just... I'm just going to... yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Steven. So how's your day going? Lion, it's nice to see you. Eric from Tea Sleuth, Tea Traveler, Matthew Ritson, Kung Fu Cha Post, and everyone else who's hanging out. This is going to be a process, so chill out, grab some tea. Drink some tea with us. Press it into a cake. Press it into a cake while you're waiting. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Whew. So yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just trying to blend it as much as possible. I'm letting the tea do the work for me here because luckily again, these leaves are pretty evenly sized. They're pretty even in weight. If you're doing this with a sencha, I'd probably have to like use some kind of, you know, machine to evenly blend them. But because these leaves, even from different batches, are about the same, you know, they've got the same parameters, they're just blending really, really well, which is what we want. And then all of the kind of like dust will settle down to the bottom, which is also what we want. We don't want too much dust here. And yeah, this tea is old. It's from 2017. It's three years old now. And so the question is also, you know, can you really press tea that's seven years old? And the answer is, you know, I, again, I've never seen it done in person, but yes, because you'll find some pu'er that's been pressed from like previous years. You'll find hecha that's been pressed using previous years. And the year that's on the cake will be the year of the pressing. So you might be getting a cake from, you know, 2000. 10, but it's actually pressed from material that's been made in 2009, 2008, that they blended together. Um, so, you know, I figure this will be okay. I've seen some people talk about cakes um, that are like made using material from three years ago. I think we'll be good. They are very dry though. So what we need to do now that they're all nice and blended. Yeah, Steven? Master, tea Master Steven? Huh. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it looks good. Looks pretty even to me. Um, yeah, Ooh, look at these guys. Really fun. Kind of big pieces. So now our next challenge is to get these soft because we need to press them into cakes, okay? Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that using my kettle because I'm so extra. I don't want to use stuff in my kitchen. I'm just gonna use tea stuff to make tea stuff. And I have a steamer basket here that I might make for a larger batch, but I'm going to try to use a small mold first. All right, so here's the tea, about 100 grams. I picked these, uh, what are they, maybe like, this is really funny. I just bought these from Amazon. It says mad in China. I think they're kind of happy in China, actually, because the U.S. is not handling the coronavirus situation as well as they are. <laughs> so it's mad. It's mad in China. Um, I think it's about 3.5 inch mold. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not going to pretend to know what I'm doing. I just don't know. And we just 
yeah, we'll just try it out. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll just figure it out, I guess. All right. So I need to get enough leaves to cover, to like fill up this mold over here. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of leaf. So I think I'm gonna use this guy, turn it over. Let me put the leaves in here. What do you think, Steven? There's steam going out? A little oh, steam yeah. action? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay. That should work. Some of these leaves are gonna fall in, but that's okay. So I'm using a spider. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, where's the tea police? Uh, I'm excited. I am. But I also, when I'm excited, I get nervous. So, yeah, we'll just figure it out, I guess. I think I need a little bit more than this. Um, T. Sleuth, Eric, normal to press like that for Hunan? Yes, so, um, Hunan province does a lot of Heicha. And I have seen a lot of Hunan Heicha where it's like, this is a 2018 pressing, but actually the material is from like years ago. Um, to be fair, they were actually keeping the material in much better conditions than I am. Like, I'm just putting them in pouches, they've just been waiting. Um, but, you know, we're not going to know how it's going to go until we test it. This feels wrong. <laughs> Is this okay? Let me just put, let me put it inside first. Oh god. Let's put it inside first, and then we'll use the spider. Will that work better, Steven? I don't know, we've never done this before. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm calling you Team Master Steven in hopes that a tea spirit somewhere will possess you and guide us to the right way. So, I, we have made tea before. By no means are we like <laughs> experienced tea makers, but a little bit of knowledge about how tea works and how tea, you know, interacts during the processing, you know, stages helps a little bit. And so what we're banking on is that these leaves have enough sticky like starches on the surface to stick to each other during the steaming. So um, yeah, enough of those oils, starches, and stuff like that. If there's not enough on the surface of the leaves, they won't really stick together. From you know what I what I believe. Um, that's something I've learned from like touching a lot of Taiwanese oolongs. So you'll notice some of them have a kind of oily look to them. Uh, in a good way, you know, they got that beautiful sheen, they got some weight to them, and that's because high quality tea tends to have more of those compounds, and those compounds are what go what's gonna help us, like, press these together. Alright. Does that work? Works for me. We can just make tea in the kettle. Alright. We're steaming. I kind of like the fact that this is translucent, so that we can see the steaming action going on. Um, and so from the videos again that I saw from like Crimson Lotus, Farmer Leaf, uh, May Leaf, I looked at a couple of them because even in Yunnan, different poor producers will have different, you know, processes. They're going to be using, you know, just a blast of steam from under the table. I don't have that kind of table, so we're just trying it out. Okay. And usually, you know, that blast of steam is just a couple seconds, like between 5 and 20 seconds. I'm gonna go a little bit longer here because I know that my steam is not that strong. But we'll test it out. I can always put it back later. Let's separate the dry tea from the, the steamy tea. Alright, can you put the dry tea here? I wanna compare it. Ooh! Nice and, nice and wet! It smells so good <laughs> in here. Wow. Smell that. I can too. smell it from here. I can smell it from here, yeah. It smells super good. So, here's a dry leaf. Dry leaf just cracks. So, that's not what we want. When you compress tea, it's just going to snap, okay? We want the leaves to get supple enough that they have a little give to them. I think these are kind of getting there, but they need a little bit more steam. Especially since the ones on the bottom were more exposed to the steam than the ones on top. We don't want them to get wet. So let's try it out. So this is another leaf. It's bending a little bit more than the other one, but still cracks. 
So we need to steam a little bit longer. Yeah. Back to the steamer. I'm so good at this. I promise. All right. So how's your day going? <laughs> Is anyone steaming tea yet? You gotta catch up with what we're doing. If you're gonna press cakes with us today. Oh man. If you wanted to steam this better, you could just get a steamer in your kitchen to do this, but I'm just so extra. I'm just like, I don't wanna use a steamer in my kitchen. It might make the tea taste like shrimp dumplings or something, you know? Um, it's as high as it goes. Yeah, it's as high as it goes. So okay. we're just setting the kettle to boiling and letting the steam kind of do its work. There's a lot of steam in there, that's for sure. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna be a little bit more present in chat once I don't have this <laughs> contraption of tea balancing. Okay, let's check it. I don't think it's done yet, but it's gonna just check once in a while how the tea is doing. Okay, it's much more wet now. Ooh, we're getting some action going on here. I like that. It smells amazing here, which is good because I feel like the tea is like alive again. For old tea, it smells really, really good. Now let's check to see how supple these are. These don't need to be extremely bendy, but they definitely need to be supple enough that if you bend them... Ooh, there we go. See this? You don't see that from your dragon well that's in the closet. So we need to do that a little bit longer so that it bends a little bit more extreme. But we're getting some bend going on with these now. So that's good. See that? We could we could do that with a dry leaf for sure. So compare that to the dry leaf. You couldn't get that kind of bending without it cracking. So we're on the right track here. I'm gonna I'm gonna rearrange these just so that the ones on the bottom are getting an even amount of steam from the ones on top. And basically when you're making tea, you know, consistency is key. So I'm just kind of following that that concept here. Can I try something? Yeah. Does this work? Cheese cloth? Yeah. Okay, so Team Master Stevens asked me to do something. Will it will it will <laughs> it actually Ooh Ooh, so he's trying to put cheese cloth over the Okay. Alright. Then you won't lose any. Okay, let's try it out. Maybe. Oh. Let's try it out. Hey! You're so smart. If this falls into the kettle, I'm gonna make you clean the kettle. <laughs> okay, I'll hold it by the things too. There you go. Ow, it's hot! <laughs> Maybe still use that. <laughs> well, I want some steam to go through. Okay. I think less steam is going through with this. I kind of want more steam to go through than what's than what's being done because right now the bottom is getting wet because yeah. of the accumulation of the cheesecloth. I want to go through the leaves. It's okay. I'll just use a spider again. Okay. I think maybe like we're probably about halfway there. This is so ridiculous, but I'm having a good time. It smells amazing in the tea room right now. <sighs> I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Um, Dr. Felix, I never thought that it's possible to press tea, which stayed for a while. I always thought you need fresh leaves. I thought so too. And then it was what Eric mentioned, um, Hunan Hecha, that I've heard from people you know, they press things in 2010, but then they're using like 2009 or 2008 material. So, you know, that's what kind of got me the idea that it's possible to press tea that's older. Um, to be sure, this isn't the ideal material because you want the leaves to be a little bit more soft, you know. Um, we live in a pretty dry climate, so the dragonwell leaves that I have here are pretty dry. Not the best. I imagine the way they store 
uh, loose tea for pressing later in Hunan and Yunnan, you know, the OG places that are actually knowing what they're doing, they're probably storing it in a way that makes it easier for the leaves to be repressed later, but, you know, they're also not having an amazing time like I am. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, that's looking good. They're looking really soft. Ooh, they're nice and soft. They're like really nice and soft. Ooh, look how look how bendy they are. They, they're back to life. They're like we've been asleep for three years, and now we're bendy again. What is going on? See, there we go. There we go. I'm really happy. So that's what you want. Um, I'm just gonna make sure, like, take a couple more samples to make sure that all the leaves are like this. So I guess it took a little bit of time for them to get to that stage, but most of them are feeling so far like they're bendy. Again, for those of you who popped in earlier, ooh, that's cracked a little bit. Maybe one more round. <laughs> the original leaf just will not, it's just gonna fade. So we want those leaves to be soft. I, I agree with Steven, we'll go one more round of these. And yeah, this will be a process, so hang on with us. But it's fun because then in the process of doing this, I'm not just trying to be kitschy, I promise. You're kind of like getting an idea of what it might take to get your tea to you, you know? Like what processes actually are entailed in making a cake a cake? Um, why are some cakes pressed really, really hard and some pressed really, really soft? Um, why don't people make green tea cakes? Maybe we'll figure that out today because this is just ridiculous. Um, and it smells really, really good. So that's why, you know, yes, it's fun, but there's also some learning you can do here in terms of what's happening with the tea leaves. Um, they smell really, really good. And they're changing in aroma. Honestly, they do smell like dragon well still, but there's that kind of like earthiness to them that's new that really does remind me of Shampoer that's coming from the leaves right now. And the first time we tested this in a really, really tiny batch, we got that same effect. And I was like, that tastes like Shampoer, you know? I didn't expect that. I really didn't expect that. Okay, last round, you guys, and then we'll get to pressing, I promise. All right. We need some elevator music for now. That's my song. <laughs> Watch, someone's gonna copyright violation me. Yeah. You stole that song from somewhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Eric from Tea Sleeves, I'd love to try this. I would say I'd love to try it too, but I'm actually doing it. What what weird universe is this? Um, Lion, I keep imagining me <laughs> going to a Disney-style song about this process. That'd be a very specific Disney movie, but I'm not opposed. These are really wet. So again, in Yunnan, the pictures, the videos that I saw, they use such like strong steaming like apparata <laughs> <laughs> they use a lot of like you know they have a machine a table a setup designed to steam the leaves really really quickly really really hot um, and then the leaves are more fresh so it doesn't take as long for them to steam them but you know home process is always gonna be a little bit different from from farm process so yeah and I thought about asking a pour maker for advice, but I'm like, let's just do like, like art brut, you know, like what is it like to make a pour cake from someone who's never done it before? Um, it's kind of fun to fumble around, I think. Ooh, these feel really nice. So I'm going to try now like a little batch. It's the first time I'm doing an actual kind of clump and I'm going to press them. And I got like a couple of cracks, but really not too bad. Not that much. I think, I think, I think, I would like to go a little bit longer, <laughs> just in case. Um, yeah, I want them to stick. So now what I'm looking for is not just the bendiness, but also 
the stickiness in the surface of the leaves. I want these leaves to stick to each other at multiple points. Some of them are, are kind of not that wet yet. So I'm waiting for the... Most of them are, but I'm waiting for some of the laggers to finish hydrating. Rehydrating. And again, they're not wet. They're just softened. I'm sure the humidity level in them, the moisture level in them is higher. A lot, lot higher. But we're not trying to make them wet. We just want them to become supple enough to stick to each other during the pressing process. Last one, I promise. Let's go. And the reason why I'm not using one of these is because I want the steam to go through a little bit more. I'm okay being a little bit messy here. Tea making is really messy. If you go to like the tea farms, there's like leaves everywhere, you know. I see like a 250 gram like spill of tea. And they're like, oh, whatever. <laughs> like, oh my God, that's like $50 in the United States. If I gotta sacrifice a couple leaves to make the process a little bit better, I'm okay with that. So, uh, Ikea, if you're out there, if you'd like to sponsor me, this is your teapot that I've put upside down to use as a steamer. <laughs> the spiders from the Asian store. And Bonavita, um, you are now a tea processing equipment piece. If anyone would like to sponsor me from those companies. My email is hello at tcarriers.com. <laughs> but uh, if Verdant T would like to talk to me, my email is no reply at tcarriers.com. <laughs> oh my goodness. I promise it's the last one. I think we're there. I think we're there. It's not that hot. It's really not that hot. So that's why it's taking so long. The steam is pretty like gentle. And I didn't want to use cooking steamers. I just didn't want to get any like weird like cooking flavors in my tea. So that's why I'm insisting on using my kettle as a very inefficient steamer. <laughs> if you want to do this at home, you can just definitely use a steamer basket over like a pot of boiling water. Okay, there we go. Look at how, look at how supple they are. That's what you want, baby. <laughs> look at that. You can just squeeze them, no breakage. If you did that to the original material over here, your heart's gonna break like the leaves. Oh, no, let's stop, let's stop doing that. It's scary. Again, in comparison, it's nice and supple, okay? So we're about ready to like roll this baby. Okay, next step, we've been pressing. We've been having fun. We've been smelling amazing smells in this room, for sure. I'm gonna put them in my little mold. This is a 3x5 like cake mold. They're so soft! They're so lovely. I'm covered in leaves. <laughs> it's one of my favorite places to be, covered in tea leaves. <laughs> I'm really sad because we had to cancel our Taiwan tour for the spring. Initially it was because we were afraid of bringing coronavirus to the states, but really Taiwan should be nervous about us bringing coronavirus to them because they've had, you know, they're so close to mainland China, they've had cases they've had to deal with since almost the very beginning, but we now have more cases than them here in the United States. So it's probably a good thing that we canceled because they're probably going to just block us. All right. So we got this little thing going on. Um, Dr. Felix, are you planning on aging the cake you're making? Of course we are! <laughs> and we're gonna make more than one cake because there's still all this material over here to play around with, so there'll be more than one cake. All right. Um, Jen from Tea Leaves and Tweed, how's it going? And Chris, how's it going? All right, so we got the shebang. This is not good enough to just press you know, I know it's tempting, you just want to squeeze it, but we need the cheesecloth now that Steven so nicely um, cut for me because I'm scissorly challenged. I'm really bad with arts and crafts, you guys, like really bad. 
Um, it took me, you know, this IKEA table. This is an IKEA table. It took me like an hour and a half <laughs> to to put it together. I'm just not, I'm just not good at it. Oh, you're gonna have to take it out. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> have to. So what do they do here? This is me. I really want to save this video and show it to someone in Yunnan to see like what the reaction is about what we're doing. They they, they wrap they wrap the cloth around. They wrap the cloth around, and then they just... Yeah, we can do this. We can do this, you guys! Lion, I wish you were here. You're really good at, like, all this, like, crafty, like, crafty stuff. There we go! Doesn't the cloth have to be inside the mold? No. No? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to be inside the mold. I can take the mold out mm. after. All right. <laughs> I would love for you guys to watch those videos after this to compare. It's kind of like a nailed it video <laughs> waiting to happen. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the mold out. I'm gonna take the mold out right now. Once I get the shape, the overall kind of just like a round shape going. It's probably too much cheesecloth. Got it, got it, we got it. I think we got it. Ooh, it's soft. And it's there we go. Cool beans. Is it round? No. <laughs> That's good enough. Sure. <laughs> Let's use something to mold it in. There we go. Oh, we can use this. It's it's mildly round. That's good enough for me. There we go. It's gonna be a bird's nest. Yeah, it's not gonna be. A, it's, I, I never intended to be like a huge like 365, 370. Wow, what what's the point? 357. 357. There we go. Ugh. I never intended to make a 357 cake. We don't have that much leaf, so. Okay, there we go. And then what they do? They at this point you can compress the leaves a little bit more. And then they make a little pokey hole, sometimes with a needle. Let's try that, because it looks pretty cool. Let's poke a hole in it. Using one of these. I guess. I guess. <laughs> okay. So I'm putting a little, like, hole that's in the bing. It's got a shape now. I can feel it. It's not going to look amazing, but, you know... I, it'll be it'll be good. It's compressing too. I can feel it. I can feel it, guys. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna take this out. Take the mold out. Right, I'll take it out of the mold. Should I take it out of the mold? Yes. Which way? Mold up. Up. See, I'm like spatially challenged. This is so difficult. So if you're better at me at spatial skills, I think you'll do this better than I will. There we go! Look at the shape, guys! Look at the shape! And yeah, I'm making the hole from this twist of the cloth that I'm gonna do. Which way are we twisting? We're twisting this way. Okay, let's twist this way. I'm putting the hole there, so when I twist the cloth... Oh my goodness, this cheese cloth is a little bit too thin, I Should think. double up on it. Everything's just falling down. Is that better? Okay. I think it's good enough, right? Steven? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna go and step on this thing. And that's what the slippers are for. You don't want my janky feet on the friggin' cake, do you? I'm gonna use slippers. You're welcome. And... Let's see. I'm gonna put my slippers on. Steven, can you help me bring the camera down to uh, ground level? You wanna press it on this? Copy paper? So that it's not the floor. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you meant the slate. Okay, so we got copy paper. <laughs> you guys, this is ridiculous! And I got the slate. Uh. <laughs> okay. 
bring it down. Just bring it to ground level on the other side. Oh, not too late. Okay. Press it like this. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. 15 seconds. Don't snap my slates. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And then we do this little dance, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I can feel it compressing. I can feel it compressing. <laughs> yeah, it's flat now, because I'm not all wobbling anymore. All 105 pounds of me. I don't, I don't want the extra five, but I'm gonna mix it. It's there. Um, how long should this take? I mean, those polar guys probably weigh a little bit more than me, right? I don't know. I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Let me tie my hair first, give it a little bit more. And then they usually let it sit under the stone, so just chill out. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do what I need to do right here. Okay. Bella's like, what are you doing? <laughs> my dog. <laughs> well, you didn't break the slate, so I'm happy about that. And again, I use my slippers, so you're welcome. Back to the table. Back to the table. Ooh, this guy needs to be a little bit more compressed, Steven. I can feel it already. It needs a tighter compression on it. I think we need to use a hydraulic press, Steven. Okay. So, feel it, Steven. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not compressed yet. We want it to be cake compressed. Where's our sample? This is <laughs> what, it is, what we did earlier. It's probably under here somewhere. No, really? So we made a sample earlier this week, which you hid during our Discord challenge yesterday, our Discord talk yesterday. Where did it go? Okay, I'm just gonna unwrap this to see how it's doing. I just wanna see the level of compression. Because this does not feel compressed the way that our cake sample did the other day. And I wonder if it's because we're not wet enough yet. Or if there's not enough pressure on it yet. Let's try it out. It's like I'm wrapping a really awkward Christmas present. <laughs> I'm really bad at wrapping Christmas presents, by the way. So if you need someone to wrap your cake, don't ask me. Ooh! Ooh, parts of it are compressed, but not all of it. That's really weird. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish out the part that's compressed. Oh my god, it didn't compress at all. Oh, there we go! <laughs> Here's right. a cake! Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the amount we're able to compress. But, it's working. We need to get the hydraulic press to go, because it's sticky enough to compress. And this here, this amount of tea, which is at the very middle, where most of my weight was, and most of my pressure was, was able to compress the tea. So now we need more pressure, or more time, or more weight, I think. So that's what we're going to use a hydraulic press for. Okay. Um, parts of it are compressed too, so if I'm fishing through this little stack here, there are some parts that are compressed. Actually, mostly towards the middle. So that was all we got compressed from that maybe 50 gram batch. And this is about the size of the, the test batch that we did earlier this week. It's bigger, so we've increased the, the quantity. So now we gotta use the compression shebang, the little hydraulic press, and see what happens. I got a compress go! So let's see if we can get a better compression on it from the... I'll have to redo that. Yeah, I'm gonna redo this. <laughs> Fold it on itself so it's doubled up. <sighs> I'm hot. Oh my goodness. Can you fix the camera? Whew. So, trial number one. Results. I mean, it's not a cake, but have you had compressed dragon oil before? I don't think so. Um, yeah, and it's it's pretty intact. You know, it's pretty intact. If you drop it, it just stays. 
pretty much like a cake. So we just need a little bit more pressure, I think. We got the right amount of humidity to get into the tea because the leaves are sticking together. The fact that this is at the very center of the cake means that we need to get more pressure, more weight, and maybe more time for the cake to compress. But we have the right humidity from steaming. Whew, I'm hot, you guys. It's like really steamy in here. Whew. Okay. <laughs> this gives me so much joy already. It's like my little baby. It's so beautiful. It looks like a puer cake, you know? I mean, just look at it. Goodness gracious. All right, so we need a larger batch of this. This is why I was nervous. I'm like, can we replicate what we did the other day, which is about the size in a larger batch? Yeah, and so interestingly, the smell of it because of the humidity being introduced into the tea reminds me a little bit of shang puer. And I don't know if that's like a, you know, just a matter of suggestion but it smells like dragon wool but a little bit earthier a little bit toastier toastier yeah like dragon wool like toastier version of shang puer it's really interesting all right so we gotta remold this again i'm probably gonna re-steam this just to re reintroduce some of the moisture because the moisture will have gotten trapped inside the cheesecloth so we need to re-steam this again. I saw that in some of the videos in Yunnan, <laughs> some of them were still compressed, little compressed bits. Um, in Yunnan, sometimes they'll leave the mold as it was, like the molded piece, and steam it again. So maybe we'll try that. Just to get them to compress together a little bit better. <sighs> it's hot. What have I missed during all the shenanigan action? Um, <laughs> feet, you guys are crazy. No, I was gonna use my feet. Goodness gracious. Um, Shiloh called the Yunnan compression dance. Dude, Shiloh, you went to Yunnan. What are we missing here? Um, I think it is just more pressure. The, the stones that they use, so the pressing stone we use is this big slate here. I think that we need something a little bit smaller, a little bit more blocky than this. I actually think that the paper, stack of paper, might mm -hmm. be a little bit better because this okay. is... So when I put my weight on this, all hundred... Let's call it a hundred, be nice to me. All hundred pounds is getting distributed here and here. When really our cake's really tiny, it's just over here. So I think... I'm not a physics major. <laughs> so if we can get a smaller, more compressed stand, I think it'd be better. Um, the ones that they use in Yuna are just a little bit bigger than the cake, so maybe that's why we weren't able to get as much pressure evenly across the entire cake. So we'll try that again. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, hydraulic press would be great for heavy compression. Um, you'll need a saw to cut leaf out the cake after it's dry. <laughs> so the, the compression, I mean the hydraulic press we have here, is I think the type that screws down, Steven? Um, it's hydraulic. What does that mean? <laughs> a, a screwing one would be manual, because you're screwing it. Oh, so it's not screwing This one. is the hydraulic piece. Okay. It's top. So should we try doing it using the dance again one more time? What do you guys think? Should we do the dance thing? I got I got time. Um, like I said, it's gonna take a while. But I would like to try it using the traditional kind of like standing on it method one more time. And if it doesn't work, we'll try the hydraulic press. We were actually reserving the hydraulic press for Sencha because we were not able to compress Sencha at all whatsoever. But we'll see if we can do it here with the dragon well. What I could do, too, is to make a smaller cake. Do you think that might help get things together a little bit better? Let's think critically. Will a smaller cake compress easier than a larger cake? I mean, this guy is small and it compressed better. A smaller amount of leaves means that we have more weights applied 
to leaves per leaf than if we use a lot of leaves. So yes, I think we should maybe use a little bit less leaves. Down for it? Try using less leaves? Okay, we'll try it. <laughs> okay, back to the steaming. There we go. So these are still soft than the original but I want to just make sure they still have enough moisture in them because the cheesecloth from earlier was sucking up some of the moisture from the leaves so a little bit more dry than when we first started trying to press them so just want to make sure that they're wet again um, Eric asked where did you get the hydraulic press for my boyfriend uh... I was like, Stephen, I wish you had a hydraulic press. <laughs> Actually, isn't that awesome? Um, Shiloh, I will message you the video of the dye potters using the cinder block to compress tea cakes. Hmm. I think we should use the stack of papers. Because okay. it's closer in overall shape and size to a cinder block. Maybe I could use my tea tray too, but I think I might kill me. <laughs> I have like a stone, like clay tea tray that kind of looks like a cinder block but I think my tea teacher will kill me if I use it to step on to make dragon well cakes um teapots how's it going we're just making some tea out here some tea cakes hopefully um shining lion stand close to the middle um I think I was pretty much in the middle I think I need a smaller stand to stand on uh, the cinder blocks the stones that they use in the videos that I've seen um are a little bit smaller and really they're just right on top of the cake so I think yeah standing in the middle a smaller stand I think and maybe both me and Steven need to be on there we can just hug on top of the cake no <laughs> those people in Yunnan you know like uh, I've seen like girls do the compression on it too so I don't think it's a matter of my weight I think I need to figure out a way to compress it better and maybe steam it better too. You think this is done? Will it steam better with the thing off of it? What do you mean? Ooh, they're really wet. Ooh, they're really, really wet. Okay, let's get this going. All right, so we're gonna make a try we're gonna try to make a smaller amount using a smaller cake. Oh, Steven, you're so nice. Thank you for helping me figure this out. Okay. So now, instead of putting it in the mold first, the way that they do in Yunnan, we're going to put it in the cheesecloth within the mold. Okay. And by the way, all of this moisture, if you left this tea to age just as it is, is going to start molding the tea. So luckily we live in Las Vegas, we always have sunlight. We're going to age this outside. We're gonna, we're gonna rest it outside in the sun after the pressing to try to get some of the moisture that we reintroduced into the tea back out. And sun drying is what they do in Yunnan anyway. So I could use an oven, but I'm trying to like keep it a little bit more like authentic hmm. by putting it in the sun. Okay, so you got this guy. And then Stephen double, double layered the cheesecloth so it's not so thin anymore. And then we're using the mold. Can I do it? Do we need this plate? Can no. I just put it on the table? Yeah. Okay, I need a flat surface. All right, so I'm gonna get all the leaves across the edge of the mold. And then I'm gonna. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure how to use a tying to help compress the leaves. I think we're just putting pressure on the cake itself. Yeah. By tying it. What do you think, Stephen? I think it's keeping the the side walls of it from. Oh, experiment. you're right. So by tying it, I don't think I need to know anymore. There we go. By tying it, you're helping the side keep together, which we saw in the first cake. The leaves are kind of falling apart. Oh, I'm not even on, on screen anymore. <laughs> so we have 18 seconds remaining on this first hour. We're just going to hop onto a new live 
join us. We're just going to pick right up from this cake making process. I'll see you in the next video. Right here. Right now. Same cake. <laughs> what do you mean I gotta say hi to them? I'm like, I'm doing my tea master thing, okay? I'm like, I'm like busy. I'm busy like making tea and stuff. Don't bother me. <laughs> okay. I think you're right. I think that twisting it is gonna help to stay together a lot more. So we're just, we're just, we're trying to figure it out. I like the way that this is feeling already. So I think that's really smart. So welcome back, my friends. Um, welcome back. Uh, Delphine, nice to see you. I didn't see you earlier. Lion, Shiloh, Dr. Felix, uh, Eric, um, Planet Paws, Teapods, Coming to Sinensis. Oh, goodness. I don't even want to, I don't, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> there are this many people watching. I forgot that this is just not me messing around. Like, um, the Tea Police is just going to refer to the TCIA at this point. All right, so in the first half, we steamed the tea, we blended the tea, um, we tried it again. I mean, we tried it the first time. We got this much compressed out of like a good 50 grams of tea. Yeah. Um, so this was the initial batch, what's in here and what's in here. And we got about this much compressed, which is, you know, it's not the best, but again, have you had compressed dragon roll before? I didn't think so. So I'm pretty happy. Um, now we're just trying to figure out the process to get a better amount of compression on the leaves. I think more pressure, more concentrated weight, a better like kind of tying process here will help the leaves stay together when they are actually getting like um, stood up, stood on. <laughs> I need to tie this, Stephen, somehow. I think maybe you could use like a little rubber band because I can't knot this. So now I know why they do the knot thing. You know, this is so interesting. Again, the reason why we're doing this is to have fun, but also to help us understand how our teas are processed. And now I understand why that hole in the pour cake is so critical because you could wrap it up if you want to, but you really need to tie the cake together. Otherwise stuff's going to start falling apart. Um, I can't tie this cheesecloth. Um, it's too thick, but we can at least keep it together using this. Is that good enough? Yeah. Um, Dr. Felix, thank you for hanging out. Good night to you from Las Vegas in Poland. Hopefully there will be a cake in the morning. We'll see. Hey, Bella, you ready for the next, next attempt? Let's use a smaller coaster. So this is the tea right here. This is all the tea, just right here. The top is just cloth. So I kind of wish we had a little bit less cheesecloth, so that's directly impacting the cake. But we'll just try it out. Again, we have no idea what we're doing, so... <laughs> Before we do the steppy, like, Yunnan dance thing, um, let's look at the notes really quick. Um, Shiloh from Nuev Orden, when you do the Yunnan compression dance, first turn the mound upside down to create a more compressed bing hole. This will help the leaves stay together better, too. I like that! Okay, cool. Like this? <laughs> <laughs> I like how even the most simple steps are so, like, process changing. This makes sense to me because I wasn't able to, like, get, get this compression and, like, form over here. I dig it. Um, yeah. Severina Bambino and Tea Works, welcome to our little experiment. We're trying to press a dragon roll tea cake. <laughs> We're so dumb. Um... Elver Dada wrote and Tea Traveler, welcome back, friends and friends. There we go. Yeah, it's feeling. Yes, you even feel this. So, I know it's not compressed yet, but when you make tea, even if you mess up, it's good to test. Like, just feel, smell, just just see what's going on at every stage, so that you kind of know where the tea is going, and you know where you can fix things. Because I know for sure the tea will compress because I was feeling the leaves, they look nice and supple. For those of you who are just joining in, look how soft these leaves are. Um, they can actually bend because we've exposed them to so much um, water during the steaming process. I can't find any wet leaves. I think I've used all of them. They're all in here. <laughs> so, yeah. Shiloh, anything else? So. I can't show you guys how this feels, but I can at least tap it. 
it's got some weight to it, you know? Oh, well, there we go. So we steam the leaves so they're bendy, so that when you press them, look how bendy that boy is. He can go to yoga class. Wow, you know? Um, they're not gonna break when we press them. All right, last notes before we get going on this. Teapods, what if you took a jar and then use a coffee presser to push it down and then duct tape the press into the jar with a tea alert and just keep applying pressure? We could, but we will test out what our copycat method is from the Yunnan videos. But I'm sure there's so many ways of going about this. Okay, let's try it. I guess it's time for the dance again. I hate this. Okay. Should I use the copy paper or should I just use this thing? Just use this thing. Uh, so our process is changing. We're going from this huge slate, which I think was not... It was just distributing too much weight over a big space, but all we need is this. You know what I mean? So instead of 100 pounds distributed over this much space and only needing this much, you know, to press into, we're going to use this tiny guy to put 100 pounds onto here. So all the weight's gonna go into our little T over here. Yeah? Now, okay, so the cake's still upside down. Do I flip it over again? I don't think so. I'm gonna flip it over. Okay. Let's change it up. Hi, Bella. Okay, give me some space, dog. <whistles> Using my little slippers. How am I gonna do this? <laughs> so a fun fact. When I was little, I used to be an ice skater. Fun fact, I don't ice skate anymore. <laughs> Bella. So we're doing the compression dance. Bella, stop sniffing the tea. I know it smells really <laughs> good, but you're not supposed to sniff it. Okay. So I've only got one foot on there. Let me put two feet on there. Uh, let's see if I can get my two feet onto this tiny poor coaster. These coasters I used too for the Team Masters competition in Vegas. Um, I cooled them down using dry ice to try to simulate the feeling of Taiwan's high mountain regions. Bella, I know it smells really good, but you can't sniff it, okay? A little bit longer. 10 seconds. 10. 9. 8. I'm so out of shape. 7. 6. 5. Four, three, two, and one. All right. If this doesn't work, we're gonna have to use a hydraulic press, okay? Because this is ridiculous. <laughs> it's more solid. Okay. Let's open up our awkward tea Christmas present. And again, guys, I appreciate you guys hanging out while we figure out this process. We could have just figured it out by ourselves, but that's not as fun. I think this is more fun. And you get to open up the Christmas present with me now. <laughs> okay. Wiggle too, he says. You were doing that. I was wiggling a lot, not on purpose, but because it's such a tiny amount. Am I not so impressive that I can stand on this tiny piece of slate? You're lucky that my I wear a size five. Open it. Open it. It looks better. I'm like afraid to like, I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to pick it up. I'm afraid to pick it up. It's together, but I'm afraid to pick it up. <laughs> so it's, it's got a cake shape, but I'm afraid if I pick it up, it's going to fall apart. So we got the shape going. The first time we tried it, there wasn't a shape at all. But if I pick it up, will it will it keep shape? So before I pick it up, the idea to twist the cloth to keep the leaves together was awesome. The idea to put it upside down was also awesome because we're not making the you know we're not we don't have the cloth in the way of the, the slates. <laughs> oh my gosh okay a lot of it's together a lot of it is together it's not all together 
but some of it is together. <laughs> That's, That's it. That's a dragon ball cake. That's a cake. I, I guess. It's more like an onigiri. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an oddly shaped... Ooh, stuff's still so falling down from it, but it's it's together. There we go. And then there's a little hole where you put the... <laughs> where you put the... <laughs> this is a dragon ball cake. Um, yeah, so have you had a dragon ball cake before? It's together. So, yeah, let's compare it to our first... <laughs> let's compare it to our first trial to see how the power of friendship has helped us improve our process. So this is trial number one. Let's see how much weight we got on it. So the very, very first tea curious dragon roll cake is still losing leaves as I speak. It's a gram. <laughs> That's a single gram. And then this here is about 20 grams. <laughs> okay, so you can see on the surface of the leaves, they're quite shiny. And that's like the, the sugars and like oils and the tea kind of sticking together. I honestly think that we just need more pressure on this to really get it compacted. Um, this here is pretty good, but I want it to stay intact if I bring it outside, if I go, you know, dry it in the sun. Um, it's maybe like 20% off from where I want it to be. Hey, Steven, you're 20% heavier than I am, right? <laughs> so will 20% off mean that we just need someone 20% heavier? Or we could use a hydraulic press. Or we could use a hydraulic <laughs> press, yeah. So this is number two of the Dragon Ball Cake experiment. It's relatively intact. There's still leaves falling. It's falling apart! There's still leaves falling off of it. It's like a baby. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now it's vaguely heart-shaped. You can still see where the, the 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 hole was, where we tied the thing together, and there's just cheesecloth sticking out of it. But it's a cake, and I'm pretty proud of it. No one can tell me otherwise. That was a pretty okay... yeah. Um, Delphine's question is, is it dry? It's not dry. What we would need to do after this is to go outside and dry it in the sun. But I want it to be a little bit more compressed because I do really mean for these to age over time. I'm not just playing around with tea and wanting to waste tea. I would really like for this dragon ball to stay with me. And if I can get it compressed and dried correctly, I think it has a better chance of staying intact over a period of years than if it's loose. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to try one more time with the hydraulic press. And we're going to steam the leaves another time to make sure that they're nice and supple. And that's why we wanted to test the leaves during the process to see if it's an issue with the stickiness of them. No, they're certainly very soft. See, look at this guy that fell off from the cake. They have the ability to take shape, but we just need a little bit more pressure now. Or we need a flatter cake. So that more of the leaves are exposed to the pressure during the pressing process. That's my baby! You wanna name him? Let's name him, Steven. You're really bad at names, you know. I'm trimming off a good amount of the excess cheese cloth, he says. Okay. Uh, yeah. My baby! Oh, it's so like, I know what it's like to have a child now. <laughs> I'm just like, no, stay alive! <laughs> stay alive! <laughs> I think at the very center of this, there will be a pretty dense cake. But right now, it's not that dense. And I'm not about that. I'm like babying it too much. It's pretty intact though. I mean, it's keeping its shape. That's... that's... yeah. I never thought a day would come that I would be looking at a Dragon Ball cake that I made. I thought like some cool company would come up with it, but yeah. It smells really good. You're a cool company. 
<laughs> Reeve, Shiloh with the jokes. Oh my god, let's kick this. What? Let's kick this guy. He says we should name the cake Reeve, but no, I don't want to call it Ree and Steven because the cake might fall apart, and then that might doom us forever. <laughs> look at these. Look at all these Dragonwell uh, leaves that we've gotten old Kirby. They're all like. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Our cake. So this is trial two. I think it's a considerable... Ugh, the cake's falling apart from the first trial. Considerable improvement. So thank you, um, Shiloh, um, for your input. And yeah, I really do think there's another way to go about this, but I really want to try to make it happen the way they do in Yunnan. So let's see what we can do. You guys want to stick around for the end of this hour? We're gonna go until we gotta go. So, and in doing this again, we're learning about how tea processing is done. Like I could just go to Yunnan, but I mean I can't this year because of this whole coronavirus shebang. <laughs> and it'll be a really funny story to go to tell people once I do make it to Yunnan. Okay, we're gonna steam these guys again because they're getting wet. I mean, they're getting dry from the cheesecloth. What are we changing in our process this time, Steven? We're trimming off extra cheesecloth, and then we're gonna use a hydraulic friggin' press to make sure that this goes well. We can also make the cake a little bit flatter so that we're just trying to get more pressure into these leaves. So they're, they're intact, but they're not exactly sticking together that much. It could be a little bit better, so yeah. Let's steam these first. Steven, what are we doing to put between the cake and the hydraulic press? Uh, these things. Okay, do you want to make like a brick? I was going to rubber band this after it's in there around that. So okay. It's in one spot. So we have these weights for the- Ooh! <laughs> Jeez. It's like a brick phone. We have these weights that we're going to put on the cake. They're pretty heavy. I like how dense they are. They're probably good for like <coughs> getting some pressure on these because I think the only difference I can think of between what we're doing and what the Yunnan process is is they have much better stones, much sexier stones than we're using. This is getting a little bit closer, so I think that'll be good. But imagine making <laughs> bricks instead of cakes. I like the round cakes though. Here we go. I'm not gonna snatch it away from you anymore. Okie dokie. <sighs> We're just way too tea curious. This is like too much tea curious. Like curiosity killed the cat tea curious. Has anyone made a dragon wall cake before? Am I the first person in the United States to make a dragon wall cake? If so, I don't want to be the first person because my attempt is really sad. So thinking about how this cake will change over time, the taste of loose tea versus the same tea that's not compressed. I mean, th that is compressed. Like, compressed tea and loose tea of the same material do taste different. So I find that loose tea tends to have a little bit more complexity, a little bit more, like, just a little bit more interesting things going on. But it also has the capacity to become more stale. When you press a cake, it kind of has, you know, it has more cohesion to it, like it's got more rounded profiles, it's got more balance, it's got more texture. And for sensitive teas like this dragon well here, which is, you know, a green tea that will easily go south over time um, and stored in such a small amount, like in those pouches that I have, you kind of want to have them in a more intact format to give them a better chance of kind of like aging. When tea leaves are compressed like this and aged, they kind of like benefit from each other being so close. There's less air to penetrate through them and stuff. Okay. These are dripping wet, so I think we're good. You want me to put them, put, put, put them in here? All right. This room smells really good, by the way. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I have some Seabelly's friends here. They are from Ruby Lion 
And Lazy Cat Tea, that's the ultimate TCIA right there. Hey, Lazy Cat Tea, do you want to buy some Dragon Ball cakes after I'm done pressing these? They're single origin, aged. <laughs> 2017 vintage. American made. Wow. Not only is it Chinese made, it's also American made. So you can piss off, like, if it's Chinese made, you can piss off people who want to buy only American made, but it's also American made. So yeah, this is like the ultimate product for people who, you know, are conscious buyers. Recycling, upcycled green tea leaves, like all the works, all of them. All right. So this is trial number three, for those of you who are just, you know, coming in. This is trial number one. It's a mini cake. It's like a tool trial, you know? It's like a gram. <laughs> this is attempt number two, which does have more shape. You can kind of see where the hole is, where we tied the knot together. But we need a little bit more pressure, because this guy does have some looseness to it. I want it to be a little bit more compressed. We stood on a slate and did the dance like they do in Yunnan to get those compressed. We gotta do the hydraulic press this time to try to get it to compress even more. All right, so I'm gonna press these guys down, get the leaves to the sides of the mold. Um, let's see. Is there see. enough in there? I think there is enough. I don't want it to be too big. Is it less than this one? It's gonna be a little bit less. Yeah, I think it's fine. So I'm reducing the amount of leaves, just because the more leaves you have, the more weight you need to apply overall to get the amount of weight pressed into each leaf, if that makes sense. And we just have like a home hydraulic. How, how strong is a hydraulic press anyway? It's pretty strong. Six tons. Six tons? Wow. That's what it says on there. <laughs> That's not tons. Jesus Christ. Okay. And then what do you want me to do with this? You want me to... Just tie it up like you do. I didn't... There's less to tie up with. So we cut some of the cheesecloth off just to give us more kind of like... Ugh, what's less, going on here? Less excess. Yeah, it's less excess, but we need to tie this as tightly as possible to bring up the sides of the leaves to make sure that they stay intact. So the tighter we can do this, the better, correct? Oof, oof, this cake is not coming together. Okay, there we go. Come together. Right now. In this cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can see the sides of it are kind of lifting up, which means that we're getting the tea a little bit more compressed. Steven, are you good at tying knots? I don't think you can tie a knot in that. Uh, we need like a longer one, and then we gotta like. I wish we could secure this better because I want it to be more intact. We had some issues with the first, the second um, trial, getting it to stick together. So, there we go. And then we can just tie it with a rubber band, I guess. And then we'll do what Nuev Orden from, uh, well, Shiloh from <laughs> Nuev Orden says. And we gotta not only. Compress it like this, but well, we'll turn it upside down to get the knot. It's not even, I mean, we're not even gonna have a hole. It's just the knot is bigger than the freaking cake at this point. Okay, is that good enough? Yeah? Sure. Okay. Upside down, so this is what it's gonna look like. It's not that well formed, <laughs> but it's okay. We're not trying to get them well formed at this point. I just want them to freaking compress at this point. All right, here we go. And we're gonna try to compress it with the hydraulic press. Okay, let's show you the hydraulic press. I'm over here and now Steven's gonna host the stream. <laughs> My dog's like... What you doing? What are they doing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna scratch myself, because this uh, is weird. Yeah. This is gonna be weird. What's weird about it? Because it's gotta be center. It's okay if it's weird. Ooh, it doesn't want to stay on top of it. 
You want me to hold the... Nope, you're not going to put your hands in there. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? For science, dude. You're putting yeah. your hands in there. Yeah. So for those of you who are just coming in, we're trying to compress our third trial of green tea cake into a natural compressed cake. Maybe? I think it, I think it's 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 maintaining. How compressed do we want it? I mean, more compressed than our original. Because this is, I mean, no effort to me, but I don't know how much pressure is more. on the tea. More. Bella. More. <laughs> Come on. Our dog is just the manager. How compressed do we want it to be? That's a good question. More. Uh. Why do you feel it cracking? No. I think it's fine. Okay. I mean, you've seen those, like, okay. iron cakes in Hunan. Should I back it off then? No, just keep going. What? No. <laughs> Why not? It will go all the way through. What do you mean? It's six tons. Is it a lot no. of pressure right now? Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let up, I guess. Okay. So how much pressure do you think we put on it? A lot. I'm just not... I'm not a... <laughs> this it's poor totally cake. solid. Nice. Is it solid? Yeah, here. Oh my god, it's solid! I'm so excited. Okay, let's open this up. Hi, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, the other one. We're Camera on chef. this. Okay. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> Christmas time. I know, right? Christmas time for the third time today. Happy birthday to the TK. We're like sweating. I'm sweating. Yeah. We're just doing so much over here. Do you think this will go better? Is it really completely solid? Yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wow, that looks a lot better than what I did, that's for sure. Yeah, I can actually lift it up with two fingers. And it's not falling apart. And it's not falling apart, we, we did it! Well, it's falling apart a little bit. It's falling apart at the sides. I think that's just, you need to tie the knot a little bit better and tighter. I do. Yeah. You need to tie it up a little bit better and tighter. But what we did get to clump in the middle is pretty solid. Goodness gracious me. Okay, so this is trial number one. How many grams is that? Trial number two, which was 20 grams. And let's see how you did, Steven. You didn't have to do a dance though, so it's not as magical. <laughs> it's also 20 grams, but it's more compressed. So hey. I don't know, it, it looks smaller because it's more compressed. And yeah, it is more even compression. There we go. Now, all we gotta do left is to wrap it in a paper, right? <laughs> you think this is good enough to wrap in a paper already? I think so. Where did that go? Oh, I, I didn't put the label on it. We need to do that later. I, I like cut out like a little label to put on, but I totally forgot in our just like mad attempts to try to make this work. Okay. This is such a sad looking cake, but it's ours and I'm happy. Um, yeah. Here's another secret. I'm really bad at folding. Steven, what? do you have any idea how we're going to do this? Hey Shiloh, do you remember how people did this little... Okay, they, they did it like this. And then I guess we fold them. Is anyone really good at origami? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good at this. I'm really, really good at this. No, it's not gonna work like this. What's the best way to fold this in? Uh, get another tea cake and see how they did it. <laughs> I guess. No, I want to figure it out. I think that paper is too big. I don't think it's too big. They have a lot of folds in theirs. Yeah, that's cool. I'm just gonna try to fold it in a way that shows off the fact that it's it's a circle. I think you're right though, this might be a little bit too big. 
<laughs> this is the best day ever. Yeah, yeah, it's happening. It's happening, right? And usually they have this little like flap at the very right. They usually have a little flap. Small slivers. Fold rotate slightly. Fold rotate slightly. You guys haven't met me in real life. I'm so bad at folding. I'm like really bad at float folding. Okay. Nice. Ta-da! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> so this is the first ever Tea Curious Cake. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is kind of what the shape of the cake is. It's not really round. <laughs> Alright, and then we'll write our names on it. Yeah? So... Let's let's put it on. So T curious. Two thousand seventeen And what day is it today? March it's the eighth. I'm trying to write really light on it so it doesn't seep through. Boom. <laughs> and it's solid. Cool. So we, can, we can throw that in the vault and open it up in, in 10 years 20 or years. something. I don't know. So I guess we did it. Yeah. And it's solid. And it's better for my tea than it was, I guess. Oh, you're right. Marker will impart a small strong scent. Get it out! Get <laughs> it out! That was a trial. Let's... Oh god, it's coming apart. Let's not lift it not... like that. Another one. Okay, Whoa. you're right. Let's not use a marker. Now I'm gonna be able to fold, press, fold. So, fold, 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 fold. <laughs> How did I do it the first time? Fold. How did I do it the first time? I just like MacGyvered it the first time. Fold. Rotate. Fold. Yeah, correct. Fold. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fold. Fold. And then get me a pencil, Steven. They're right. I'm so stupid. Why did I use a why did I use a marker? Okay. This looks a lot better than the first one. That's for sure. And... Fold. Do you have any pencils? Maybe not. Do we have any pencils? Um... If we don't have pencils, we'll just leave it unmarked like this. Okay. So this is the Be Curious Cake. There we go. Wow. It looks better than the first one. Look at it. It actually has a shape. Nice. <laughs> Whew. So we did it, guys. That's insane. I'm just trying to get the marker smell away. I know I'm stupid. I just got excited. So we did it. It's a 20 gram cake of 2017 Dragon Well. That's a mix of different Dragon Well batches from Mrs. Lee. And we're probably going to try to press a couple more of these because it's already all out, but yep. not on stream because <laughs> I will never ever want to watch this video of myself <laughs> in my life. So I hope you enjoyed it because I don't know, but yeah, we are seriously going to make a couple more of these and put them away for storage. Um, I want to see how it tastes like, you know, we should keep some of the original in a different pouch to see how it ages over time and eventually we'll see if this baby will be better um, so what we'll do now we need to put this outside in the sun to get it to dry because right now all that moisture that we introduced using the steaming and stuff like that smells really good but it also means that the tea has more moisture in it so it's more likely to go moldy or stale that be sour you know pick up just off notes you know so we gotta go sun dry this baby, 
make some more of these, probably using the hydraulic press. I don't know why we just didn't do that in the first place. The dance was fun, for sure, <laughs> but the hydraulic is definitely better for getting these done. Whew! I'm tired. <laughs> That's too much curiosity for one day. Oh. 20 grams. High fives, you guys. High fives, Steven. Thank you. Oh, questions, comments, concerns. Referrals to the tea police. Send them my way. I'm gonna take a nice break. We're gonna get these outside. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Goodbye. Whew. Jeez. Jeez.